And we're fresh off the panel here at One World Trade. Thank you guys both for joining me. I want to get to you first, Richard, on uh, obviously consumers are familiar with the Virgin brand, uh, Virgin Hotels, uh, obviously Virgin America before you sold to Alaska Airlines, but why cruises and why now? Well, uh, I've never wanted to go on a cruise ship. Um, uh, and, uh, and that sort of spurred me on to trying to work out why I didn't want to go on one. Uh, and how could I create with the wonderful team of people we've got um, a cruise ship that I would like to go on. And, um, and over the last seven years, um, our magnificent team headed up by Tom uh, have created, I think, the, 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 the best cruise ship uh, that's going to hit the sea in 12 months time. And Tom, you're, you're one of those wonderful people. And obviously, you've worked in cruises for a long time. So right. what is it about Virgin Voyages that will separate it from all the other offerings out there that we've seen? Well, our whole, our whole purpose is to create something that's really different. And it starts with our name. You know, Virgin Voyages is, uh, Virgin Cruise was just too easy, right? Virgin Voyages says more about the experience, right? It's the journey we take our folks on. If you look at the size of our ship, we are purposely not big 6,000 passengers. We're mid-sized ships because we listen to our consumer and they want a different experience. They want a more intimate experience. Our ships are designed to look like, you know, inspiration from super yachts. And when you go on board, everything we do is different. You know, we'll have six different main routes restaurants that you you go through each night you go to a different restaurant you don't pay for it you know the the entertainment will be fantastic the theater will transform three different times during the voyage we create something that is different because we're going to appeal just to adults so we're we're adult by design it means you have to be 18 or older to come on board the ship and that that truly sets us apart. And that's also one of the other interesting things, too, when we talk about experiences. Obviously, everyone says millennials are so drawn to experiences. Being an adult-only ship, you guys have also added a destination in the Bahamas to the Scarlet Ladies cruising destinations. Uh, tell me more about that. Uh, really excited about it. We, you know, as we did our research and talked to our future sailors, we heard loud and clear they wanted to go to those cultural spots. They wanted the uh, stuff off the beaten path, so we created you know, port, to go into Havana and to Puerto, um, Puerto Plata and to Costa Maya, so off the path. But they wanted to combine that with a beach type experience. We didn't want just any other beach experience. We wanted to create a virgin beach club experience. And we've done that. We've created a spot uh, on Bimini, the Bahamas, mm -hmm. uh, really close to Miami. We're doing that in partnership with Resort, Resort World Bimini, uh, but it's for our exclusive use. It is really cool. It's kind of like, you know, a combination of, of uh, Ibiza and, and Tulum uh, combined. And, you know, I think our guests are going to love it. They can go explore all of Bimini and then come back to the beach And I club. like the way you guys teased it ahead of the announcement as well, obviously with the fire Festival. <laughs> They've had some issues in the Caribbean, but you guys are saying that, no, this is actually happening down there. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen the film, the far fit, um, but um, I, I, I still, I'm told it's, I'm told it's good. But I think we'll, I think our, our team will get it right, uh, <laughs> unlike, unlike the team that organised the far festival. Well, we believe that this connection is the new luxury. A lot of people are experimenting on land how holidays could be redefined, escapes could be redefined. There's a lot happening and it looks like nobody has looked on the sea. This world is full of automatic pilots, so people go to a cruise and they expect this. And people step in an aeroplane, they expect this. So I think if this expectation is not met in a positive sense, that they get shaken up, because I think we have to shake up people. Uh, currently cruising does not attract me. So if I'm the target audience, a lot has to change. If you compare yourself or your product with what is there on the cruise ships, that's easy. I mean, you can easily be better. It's, that's, that's not the challenge. But if you say, well, it should be even better than things you find on land, that's the revolution. For me, Virgin is sex, drugs and rock and roll. In everything we did, we tried to get this in there. First, we asked, please give us spaces that are the opposite of each other. So we do probably the most casual restaurant on the ship and we probably do the most experimental restaurant on the ship. If we take down more barriers for people, they start doing what they really want to do. We were responsible for the gym and we were responsible for yoga space and we were responsible for the sports bar. And we said that could be one. So we tried to bring these things together. So can the can the gym happen at the bar and can the bar happen in the gym? And in this discussion, the athletic club came out that we brought sports to the outside deck. And then from the sports bar, you don't have to watch the television anymore, but you watch the people sporting in front of you. 
I think that there are people who are really young at heart. It's not about an age. It's a certain attitude to careers and they want to explore something new. I think in our heads we want that if you leave the ship you've also experienced something you've not done before. But maybe even you have learned something about it. So you not have just been resting and being on holiday. But we're able, all of us on the ship, to give you something that you will never forget. The connection to yourself and to others, because I'm seeing, especially in cities, that people get lonely. And we always try with our designs to break that. So that's why we always concentrate on, on, on spaces where people connect. At the end, the good thing about being on the ship is that it's a total escape. You're really there, you should do what you really, really like to do. You deserve it. What appealed to me about the project was doing something I've never done before, which is always more interesting than doing something you've already done. You're in a position where you're encouraged very early on to, to be disruptive. It's like, okay, we don't want to be like anybody else. We want to be completely different. So that's great. That's a great brief. I was fascinated by the, the fact that everybody was as naive as me on the project. And uh, they were coming in to try and build an alternative to the current way that people take their holidays. It really is more like, like um, working on a whole new town rather than designing a space in a boat. The, the scale and the ambition of these big cruise ships is phenomenal. I think we're only just scratching the surface. I like coming at something from a completely different angle and presumably there's there is a method to that madness, is that if you're going to be disruptive, then maybe you shouldn't know too much about how cruise, cruise liners currently operate. We wanted to feel somewhere between a room in an 80s Miami hotel combined with a space travel, combined with a cruise liner in Grace Jones' house. We are working first on the VIP suites and the VIP deck and also a Mexican restaurant. Ships restaurants tend to be just tables and chairs and then a bit of bling on the side. And so we wanted a much more formal restaurant. The traditional challenge in ship design is really the height of the ceiling. What we're doing is peppering the ceiling with a lot of lighting which will make it feel much higher as an experience. I hope they'd, they'd have had a more multi-layered experience. I hope that they'd felt like they'd stayed in the boutique hotel and they'd gone to a, a different type of beach which was on board as well, and that all of those things have actually enriched their stay beyond the, the places that they visited. We can be an instrument between air travel and space travel, and, and the cruise line is somewhere in between, then we've succeeded, right? I'm still waiting to be invited to go on the cruise, actually. Sailing for me is really the escapism. It's the, uh, it's the wind in your hair, nearly. RWD design bespoke super yachts. We are the top of the game in super yacht design. This, this big cruise ship needed elements to be more of a super yacht than a cruise ship. What Virgin Voyages really wanted to do was create something very different. They wanted the funnel to be a funnel, but not a funnel. It was actually known as the non-funnel. The funnel is, in a way, the most iconic part of the ship. Traditionally, it's been a bit of an afterthought. It's been something that's been put on top of the boat. It's essentially a flag, it's a, it's a, it's a homing beacon, and it's the kind of signature of, of, of many boats. So this is the first time, I think, from what we know, where the funnel has not been used in that way. It's been used as part of the overall integral design of the boat. The leading edge of this was almost the shape of a lighthouse. I think the uniqueness of the ethos of the ship was something that we had to reflect in the design by making the design feel luxurious, but iconic, different, exciting, new. I think the, the Virgin Voyager ship will hopefully be one of the most recognizable in the world. I mean, I'm 
not a scientist, but whatever that is, that ionic exchange, that salt and oxygen oh. kind of thing that I got to get down there and I just got to feel it, got to jump in the ocean, got to be splashed in the face by a wave. <laughs> She's got to get down there and just feel that kind of like slapping Yeah, just ocean. the energy, the sound, the I air, the, the taste. The oh. kinetic energy of, a, of this ship that's slowly moving, you sense it and I think it's, it has this trigger effect of just amplifying um, everything, you know? Because you're so clearly connected to something bigger than you, yeah. which is that ocean. But then you're on this massive machine that we made. And those two things together, I think, speak to each other in ocean travel almost more so than anything. We were like, how do you start to reinvent that? I mean, that's tries to happen in art, yes. Theatrical and cinematic, right? right? But you're going on like a trip. Like a, I, mean, not, I mean, like a mental trip. Yeah. Right. You're going on a cinematic trip. <laughs> we were thinking of the things we love about being by the sea and sort of a dock or some incredible restaurant in Essaouira in, in Morocco where you're just very salty. You're not going to go into the dock and be like, where's the hottest new light? It's not, it's not really like that. It's actually fairly chill. The design is a little understated. I'm sure the design is beautiful, but it's actually more about, again, not to be redundant, but the food and the people who run the space. It comes from doing movie sets, which is you had to make a place that people, like that narrative was so compelling that it re kind of calibrated your own experience. Our lifestyle image of like, walking around on this boat with wood and black and red and white, you know, the color schemes of you know, that golden era. Well, it's to create cruising. a myth. Together we really helped to create a certain drama with the lighting, but we were just pretty fortunate to not have only spaces, right? I mean, the black box has a fairly good, it's got a mezzanine and balcony, so it's got a two-story space, but kind of amazing lights, like just these mirrored ball chandeliers that almost like breathe like a jellyfish, like go up and down. But that is what we're trying to do constantly, you know. They turn a corner and they see something and it's just like, whoa, my God, it's beautiful, you know. Well, this melt also surprises. melt their inhibitions, right? Yeah. And then allow them to just have a really powerful kind of memorable experience. But I think and really... And get them to be, and to, it's about melting them so that they maybe begin to have this mildly hallucinogenic, cinematic, dreamy kind of experience. It's an amazing thing to do to get a phone call from Virgin to say, would you like to do probably the sexiest bit on the ship? You're creating a character which is fictional, but people almost want to become friends with. People want to have their picture taken next to her. The, the team at Virgin Voyages were amazing in the saying, you've got a completely blank canvas. They allowed me to be as expressive as I wanted to be. The journey was quite exceptional. We started looking at illustrations of Sailor Girls, but we wanted a mermaid. Virgin as a brand is fun. Mermaids are fun, but there's also that element of mysteriousness about it, of intrigue, but she's still very welcoming. That was kind of half the challenge, is how do you create something that doesn't exist? As my reference book says, mermaids are terrifyingly seductive. When you look at her face, it's almost like you want to fall in, because that's what mermaids do. The top half of her body is very, very human. The bottom half is very technical. Every single one of those scales is completely different. There's over two and a half thousand of them. Tiny little hearts, same shape as a human heart. The most beautiful cars in the world are drawn from one consistent line, from the bumper to the boot. With a mermaid, from the top to the bottom, it's just one line. To perfect that line it took seven months. She has been referred to as the spirit of the ship, and it's also quite romantic about sea journeys, about voyages, about exploring the world, sailing the seven seas. She's with you on the journey. It's a symbol of good luck for everything. We didn't really think there would ever be a project where you can see your, your logo 
50,000 feet tall. You know, the scope of the work is essentially designing a floating city. Definitely not a brief that we've had before, which, which massively excited and terrified us in equal measure. <laughs> We felt straight away really aligned to Virgin and the vision. You know, they want to disrupt the market. I think they definitely saw something in our work, um, a level of uh, playfulness that is present in the Virgin brand. It's way more than Virgin just wanting to create noise. It's about regeneration of the sector as a whole. We share that vision to just shake up that marketplace and uh, bring something completely new. I think the interesting thing about the, the logo as a whole, or the ship, particularly the, the livery of it, is you want people to get that sense immediately that we're doing something different here, and the experience will be different, markedly different from what they're expecting. <coughs> the challenge here is to make essentially a, a slow shape fast. We're trying to make it look like it's gliding through the water. There was a need for an exquisite execution. Where we ended up is, is much more a reflection of the simplicity and sophistication of how the brand needs to represent itself. The pattern itself ties into this concept of the modern romance of sailing, and it's a reference to Breton stripes, you know, those nautical stripes that, that carry a certain glamour of 50s, 20s voyaging. I think I'd like sailors to feel they're part of a new movement, to be able to look up and look at perhaps some of the other ships in the port and feel proud. When they see the ship the first time, want it to be that, oh my God, it is going to be that much different. Virgin Voyages has always had a very, very strong focus on well-being. Many vacations give you uh, the opportunity to rejuvenate, but not many vacations bring you back that little bit different. For us, well-being is a, is a concept that's more than just a spa treatment. It's more than just a, a healthy option on a menu. It's a, it's a fundamental tenant for how we think about bringing this experience to life across every aspect of it. We don't want to just relax you and rejuvenate you, we want to give you this new sense of power to tackle life. We think fundamentally everyone's in need of that nourishment of their soul. I think vitamin C is the antidote for this, this crazy modern world we all live in. Most ships have a spa and it's in one area and it's typically lower on the ship. We've taken an approach to decentralise all that and create well-being experiences all around the ship. We have lots of very different spaces that allow our sailors to be different versions of themselves. You know, the start of the day, we, we hope and, and expect that our sailors will, will join us on the crow's nest. And what could be more uplifting and rejuvenating than, than waking up to a 6am or 7am yoga class with the span of the ocean all around you? We would talk a lot about tox, detox, retox. When we eat too much the night before, the next day we'll, we'll have a smoothie or a shake um, and, we'll, and we won't indulge so much. So this sort of rebalancing of ourselves, we felt was really important. Allowing your personal self to do these things is what's really important. If we're achieving that through design and how we program and how we uh, have woven these spaces and these activities together, and I think we've been pretty successful. The more time we have to look after our whole self, the better we feel as individuals, and it sort of allows us to be sort of running on all cylinders when we're back in our daily life. This voyage doesn't end. This now stays with me and fuels how I'm gonna live my life.